Adlandrapa Project. Have you ever looked at a map and imagined a world different from the one we know? What if the vast bodies of water that cover our 70% of our planet's surface were different? What if they were smaller, or bigger, or positioned elsewhere? Let's narrow it down a bit and focus on the Mediterranean Sea. It's a beautiful, expansive body of water that's been the cradle of numerous civilizations throughout history. It's surrounded by a diverse array of 21 countries, each with its own unique culture, history, and relationship with this vital body of water. But what if we could change all of that? What if we could drain all of the water from this sea? What would happen to these 21 nations and the rest of the globe? It sounds like a plot straight out of a science fiction novel, doesn't it? In fact, a German architect named Hermann Sorgel in the 1920s had a vision that was similar. He called his audacious plan the Atlantropa Project. But before we delve into the specifics of Sorgel's ambitious plan and its potential implications, we have to remind ourselves of the grandeur and importance of the Mediterranean Sea. Its waters have been the lifeblood of civilizations for millennia, a vital conduit for trade, exploration, and cultural exchange. It's a sea that has shaped history. But what if history had taken a different form? Let's take a moment to meet the visionary behind this audacious plan, Hermann Sergel. Born in 1885 in the bustling city of Regensburg, Germany, Sergel was a man who dared to dream big, very big. Throughout his career, Sergel made significant contributions to the field of architecture. His designs were known for their elegance and functionality, but it was his vision for the future that truly set him apart. His most ambitious and extraordinary plan was definitely the Atlantropa project. Atlantropa. The name itself is a blend of Atlantic and Europa, intended to evoke the mystique of Atlantis, the legendary underwater city lost to time and memory. Sergal's vision for Atlantropa was ambitious to say the least. He sought to achieve something that sounds utterly impossible, to drain the Mediterranean Sea. This massive body of water, about eight times the size of modern Germany, was seen by Sergal as a tremendous reservoir of untapped potential. By emptying this colossal sea, he aimed to uncover new territories for European settlement, providing a solution to the pressing issue of Lebensraum, or living space. Instead of embarking on wars and conflicts for territorial expansion, Sergal proposed a peaceful alternative to reclaim land from the sea itself. The plan was to construct a series of colossal dams across the Strait of Gibraltar, the Dardanelles, and between Sicily and Tunisia. Sergal's grand vision for Atlantropa was not a mere daydream. It was a meticulously planned project that hinged on a series of colossal dams. These dams were not just about land reclamation, they were also about harnessing the potential of the Mediterranean Sea to generate power and facilitate transport. The cornerstone of the Atlantropa project was a gigantic dam across the Strait of Gibraltar. This narrow waterway, a natural junction connecting the Mediterranean Sea with the Atlantic Ocean, was seen by Sergal as the ideal location for his ambitious project. The dam here would not only block the water flow, allowing the Mediterranean to start draining, but it would also serve a dual purpose as a massive power station. The dam at Gibraltar was designed to be more than just a barrier. It was meant to be a powerhouse. The flow of water from the Atlantic into the Mediterranean, once impeded by the dam, would create a significant height difference known as a hydraulic head. This potential energy could be used to drive turbines and generate electricity on an unprecedented scale. But the Gibraltar Dam was just the beginning. Sergal's vision extended further into the heart of the Mediterranean. He proposed building another dam between Sicily and Tunisia, effectively splitting the Mediterranean into two separate bodies of water. This division would allow the eastern and western halves of the sea to be drained at different rates, providing a greater degree of control over the process. A third dam was planned at the Dardanelles, a narrow strait in northwestern Turkey. This dam would serve as a barrier, preventing water from the Black Sea from replenishing the Mediterranean and thereby accelerating the draining process. These dams represented the technical backbone of the Atlantropa project. Their construction would have been an engineering feat unlike anything the world had seen before. 
They were the key to unlocking Sergal's ambitious vision, and through these monumental structures, he aimed to reshape the Mediterranean region and create a new chapter in human history. While the Atlantropa project was a vision of grandeur and ambition, realizing it would have entailed overcoming monumental engineering challenges, building a dam on the scale proposed by Sergal would have been an unprecedented undertaking, presenting numerous technical hurdles. Firstly, the sheer volume of materials required for the construction of the Gibraltar Dam would have been staggering. Millions of tons of concrete, steel, and other materials would have been needed. Procuring these resources, transporting them to the construction site, and deploying them effectively would have required an immense logistical operation. Secondly, the construction techniques required to build such a massive dam were beyond the capabilities of Sergal's time. The dam would have needed to withstand the immense pressure of the Atlantic Ocean, not to mention the geological stresses and potential seismic activity. Developing and implementing the necessary construction techniques would have been a significant engineering challenge. Finally, there were the potential environmental consequences. Even if the technical challenges could be overcome, the project would have had a profound impact on the Mediterranean ecosystem. The lowering of the sea level could disrupt marine life, alter local climates, and potentially have unforeseen consequences on a global scale. Many of the Mediterranean's coastal cities would have been profoundly affected. Populations living in areas destined to become part of the new landmass would have needed to be relocated. This would have been a colossal task, involving the movement of millions of people and the construction of new infrastructure to accommodate them. Similarly, the wildlife that called the Mediterranean home would have been displaced. The lowering of the sea level would have disrupted marine ecosystems, forcing many species to adapt to new environments or face extinction. Coordinating efforts to protect and relocate these species would have been a daunting challenge. Lastly, there were potential economic disruptions to consider. The construction of the dams and the transformation of the Mediterranean would have required enormous financial resources. The Atlantropa project, if realized, would have not just transformed the physical geography of the Mediterranean region, it would have also had significant geopolitical implications. Draining the Mediterranean would have reshaped power dynamics among nations, particularly between Europe and Africa, potentially leading to new alliances, conflicts, or cooperative endeavors, as the creation of new land would have likely led to territorial disputes, with the Mediterranean Sea partially drained vast new territories would have emerged. These lands, rich in potential for agriculture, settlement, and resource extraction, would have been highly coveted, potentially leading to conflicts over ownership and control. On the other hand, the Atlantropa project could have also fostered cooperation. The sheer scale and complexity of the project would have necessitated collaboration among nations. Moreover, with the Mediterranean Sea partially drained, travel between Europe and Africa would have become easier this could have fostered cultural exchange and integration, strengthening ties between the continents. However, this new proximity could have also led to power dynamics shifting in favor of Europe. With easier access to Africa, European nations could have sought to expand their influence, potentially leading to neo-colonial scenarios. How African nations would have responded to this is a matter of speculation. While the Atlantropa project remains unrealized, its influence continues to be felt. The grand vision of Sergal has inspired numerous artists, writers, and even modern engineers. Despite its impracticality, it stands as a testament to human ambition and the power of imaginative thinking. In the realm of engineering, the idea of large-scale geoengineering projects like Atlantropa continue to spark interest. While we now have a better understanding of the technical and environmental challenges such projects would entail, they continue to intrigue us as we seek solutions to current global issues like climate change and population growth. In the end, Atlantropa serves as a thought-provoking symbol of human ambition, ingenuity, and the potential consequences of our actions. As we look to the future, may it inspire us to dream big, but also to tread carefully.